This is what I refer to as Skittle oil. It's a pretty nasty, dark looking oil. Well, I've been getting some comments on my YouTube channel about people getting this nasty looking oil after they do a load of Skittles. And I thought that maybe it's just because they had water in their chamber and it happened to mix. I didn't realize how nasty this oil was until I got a, a phone call from a buddy of mine that had the same problem. And so I had him bring me over his vacuum pump and we we're going to run some tests on it to find out what made this nasty looking oil here. And so he took his vacuum pump and I hooked it up to my freeze dryer and we started making Skittles. Well, before we started, I used my favorite oil of all time, which is black gold. And the reason I like black gold is that black gold is the only vacuum pump oil that passes the ASTM test D1401. And basically that is the ability of a vacuum pump oil, once it's mixed with water, has the ability to separate itself. And in freeze drying, that's important because when we freeze dry, some moisture still gets back to the vacuum pump. It's important for an oil to separate itself from water when we're doing freeze dried food. So with that said, I have a challenge to do to find out what's causing this oil. So the first thing I thought, well, maybe this oil is being generated from the color of the Skittles. And so we started testing and we're going to show you what the results are. The first test we performed to see if any of the dye from the Skittles somehow would leach off the Skittle through sublimation and find its way back into the vacuum pump where it would then mix in with the vacuum pump oil and discolor it. So all colors of the Skittles were separated by color and put into a white filter bag. These bags were then put through the candy mode and we found out that there was absolutely no separation of color at the end of the cycle. So the colored oil was not due to the color of the Skittles. But we did, through our research, find out that the colors of the Skittle possessed unique properties that could be manipulated into Skittle art. So here's some fun things you can do with Skittles. Just one of many things you can do with Skittles. This would probably make a good babysitting activity. Have you ever wondered what Skittles are made out of? Well, I have right here all the ingredients of Skittles. And we're going to take a look at them 
And what I did, we tested each individual ingredients of Skittles to see how it would react in a vacuum under heat to find out which one of these ingredients was causing Skittle oil. Well, the first ingredient we have here is the most common and it's the one that brings the most sweetness. And this is just good old plain, plain old fashioned sugar, okay? And we all know that sugar really has no reaction to anything that we freeze dry. And the second one is like unto it. Well, this is kind of hard to see, but you can kind of see this kind of gooey liquid here. This is the corn syrup. So between the sugar and the corn syrup, that provides a sweetness for the sugar. And there's no problem with the corn syrup. Although the sugar and the corn syrup will crystallize, it will cause no uh, discoloration to the oil. And then we have this guy right here. This is hydrogenated palm kernel oil. And this guy is really an interesting uh, chemical. And there's a lot of finger pointing at this guy right here. Uh, when this material, this hydrogenated palm kernel oil, is actually made, it's actually clear, and then it becomes oxidized almost immediately. And this is what I suspected is going to be the problem with Skittle oil. And we're going to come back to this guy in just a moment. But these top three, these are the three primary ingredients for Skittles. And then these bottom five, these only contain less than 2%. Well, right here we have citric acid, and a lot of us use citric acid in our foods and we don't even realize it. Uh, citric acid and ascorbic acid is used to preserve uh, our fruits and vegetables to keep them from going brown, and uh, it's like a vitamin C, and that is safe in our freeze dryer. And then we have this guy right here. This is a starch. This is tapioca dextrin. It's just like a starch material that kind of is a, like a thickening agent. And then we have, let's see, this is the one right here is next. This is modified cornstarch, which is also like a thickening agent that uh, really has no reaction. Now, when we did this, all these other ones right here, we mixed with water and threw it through the candy cycle to see if there'd be any reaction. And there were no reactions with these bottom five whatsoever. Uh, this ingredient right here, this is sodium citrate. This is basically salt or sodium that is derived from citric acid. There was no reaction here. And then the last ingredient we have is carnauba wax. And carnauba wax is what gives the outside of the Skittle that nice, shiny, glossy uh, appearance. And this doesn't even really melt until 180 degrees. And this uh, had no reaction in the freeze dryer. The only other ingredient that I'm missing here is titanium dioxide. But chemically speaking, that is inert and should not have anything to do with any reactions under vacuum in the freeze dryer. So. If you want to make Skittles, these are the ingredients. Of course, the other uh, ingredients I'm missing here is the color. Now, we did test the color. Uh, all, each individual color was tested and had no reaction in the freeze dryer. And the other thing I was not able to test were the flavors. But I'm pretty confident that the flavors of the Skittles is not the cause for Skittle oil. But it does come back to this guy. Now, when we tested this guy, this is the uh, hydrogenated palm kernel oil. As soon as this went into the freeze dryer, into the candy mode, within 40 seconds, this started to vaporize and turned my nice clean oil dark. This is the chemical in Skittles that is causing Skittle oil. So if you're doing any other kind of candy, that happens to have hydrogenated palm kernel oil, there's a good likelihood that your oil is gonna be dark. This hydrogenated palm kernel oil by itself is not going to darken your oil. 
there's another there's another issue behind this and we're going to discuss that this hydrogenated palm kernel oil when it's placed under a vacuum and under temperature it becomes a vapor and that vapor goes from the chamber of the freeze dryer into the vacuum pump and this has the characteristics to take any of the iron that is within the vacuum pump and to put it into suspension into the oil. Any of the iron that you have that through the wear and tear of your vacuum pump will become suspended into the oil and that causes the darkness of the oil. And so what I did, I took a sample of that oil and we had it tested. These reports were the oil analysis for the Skittle oil right here and the baseline black gold oil right here. What we're going to do, we're going to combine these two reports into one so they're a little bit easier to take a look at. And we're going to zoom in on the iron amount right here and the particulate amount down here. If we take a look at the iron amount right here on the new oil, which was black gold, we're at less than one part per million. But after one Skittle run, we're up to 22 parts per million. If we take a look at the particulate amount on the baseline of the black gold oil, we're at 256, 79, and 6. If we take a look at the Skittle oil, it jumps up to 50,728, 4,513, and 86. That is a tremendous jump in the particulate count just after one cycle of 200 grams of Skittles. The hydrogenated palm kernel oil had the ability to take all the iron particulates that were hidden in the nooks and crannies throughout the vacuum pump and to take all those particulates and to put them into solution with the vacuum pump oil. And that is what made the oil so dark and murky and pretty disgusting. This is an indication of how dirty the internal workings of your pump may be. And it's probably time to take the casing, the front casing of the pump off and clean it out to remove all this uh, particulate matter that uh, is inside your pump and to give it a good cleaning before you put new pump oil in. Because as soon as you put the new vacuum pump oil in, it's just gonna get contaminated again. At the end of this video, I have the procedure on how you can do a quick cleaning job with very few tools, and it's a pretty simple procedure. What are you gonna do with your dirty Skittle oil? Well, you might be tempted to go ahead and pour it into your Harvest Right filter system, but don't be tempted to do that. If you pour this sludge into your Harvest Right filter, it's just going to clog the filter up because all these particulates are currently mixed in and it's just going to plug the filter. So just let this oil stand by itself for one or two days and you'll see the separation where all this stuff will start to clear up on the top and get to, you'll see all the thick, darker stuff build up on the bottom. Once you see that, you can pour the stuff on the top off into the pitcher and leave all that bottom sludge on the bottom. It's kind of like what we used to do back in the good old days when we had water in the oil. We'd pour off the top and leave the water on the bottom. Once your oil becomes separated, you have better oil at the top and the dark sludge at the bottom. Go ahead and take it and filter it through your Harvest Right system. Just be careful not to pour any of the sludge oil into the Harvest Right system. And just give your Harvest Right filter a day or so to filter out the oil. And in a day or two, you'll be able to reclaim your 
your skittle oil. And you'll be able to use this one more time or several times in your freeze dryer. And the old sludge that was your skittle oil, well, dispose of it responsibly.